Hey folks, this is interesting because basically this was close. So I was going to show you too just because it was a close comment. Okay, and I'll take you back to the pictures of Asgard and stuff like that. But this is where it gets freeze-framed. You know, military can pretty much zone in on anything that's coming in inbound. Okay, so you get the deal that basically will show you that. But pay attention to our floppers because we have a very fast, like we have told you about the object that they found that moves. We know there's a tons of stuff that rotates real fast like 100 times or who knows and they found one that's 300 times and then NASA's lied and said well it rotates 100 times faster than the sun no it's a star that rotates it now you have this one here and I'm going to be a minute and I'll cue and save a bunch of time and we also have this one here which is very dramatic that's right next to where the com where this asteroid object comet whatever you want to say that came by at 0.153 IU okay folks 0.153 IU but as I sit here with my cursor to the right of this flopper, this is all very interesting flopping action of all these rotating stars right here, okay? Because basically they're all in, and as I also see this, this is star twinkling. We know stars twinkle. It's nothing new that I'm showing, okay? But as we get this footage, we have very interesting fast flopping, okay? So that's what I'm trying to find out on uh, the other constellation thing. And I went to Asgard Live today, and basically they are showing this pretty much interesting stuff during, this is five hours ago. As you see, this is Central Standard Time, 1.41 p.m. here. So down in Arizona, you can see this. And then, i.e., that they've had that uh, volcano down there starting, that's very ancient, start to show and emitting steam down there in Arizona or uh, Utah, New Mexico, somewhere, okay? So in the daylight sky, you got uh, the Big Dipper basically upside down okay yep and then so we got very interesting constellation stuff and also all these dark objects and it's in the same general area because it's <clears throat> this is New Mexico sky now I will admit it's a different camera okay but they are just five hours ago from today's central standard time okay five hours back so early this a.m. they were still getting this nice in the New Mexico sky at New Mexico State University's camera down there, which is pretty close to that other New Mexico sky camera, but you can see all the dark triangulation and so forth in this shot here, all this stuff here, all this stuff there. So basically, you can see pretty much that asteroid belt pretty damn good. So uh, let's go back to the movie real fast and play it. It's just the idea that you have the twinklers. And what I was wanting to do is get New Mexico skies so that you could see the same camera, so the direction, but pretty much that's north. Due north is that way. Okay, and east over here and west is here. So let's go to look at the constellation map because basically I got the hour and the time for you and everything here computed in. And that's what it was that night. Okay, so then we're going to go check out this big long one because basically the only thing I know that's like this, and maybe this is the dragon. <coughs> but we, <coughs> we know that there is a dragon that looks like this that's a little bit smaller than this. <coughs> but it could be the same damn thing. Apologize. Uh, we normally see this at the North Pole. But this is probably a different one, and I'm not used to this constellation, so I'm going to try to key this constellation out and figure, figure out what the, that one is. So Mars is in uh, Virgo. Okay, this was North America, and then I'll take you back to the shot. So as we go to the constellation, and we love Wolfram for all that data that we get from it, and you're going to see this flopper here, this, which is basically a star, but we basically have a lot of fast floppers in this shot. You can't contest it. You can see it with your own eyes. It'll keep playing. You'll keep on seeing that close object that came by. You got that flopper there, that flopper there. Now this is more than likely Saturn right there, okay? And we know that this is Mars right there, because let's go to the. I'm going to take you to the deal. Because of the constellation time and so forth and everything, it was here. So that flopping star in action is this year constellation there. Okay, but what's very interesting is this is, and then you'll, you see it, it's Mars there. And more than likely that should be Saturn down there by this flopper here. Okay, but what's really interesting is look here, that the only thing that should be big, the biggest star in the constellation would be that one there. Or possibly way up here. Okay, but let's go back to the video. As we play the video, you've got this flopper down here. So this will replay and replay with it coming close, but you can't miss right above New Mexico skies, folks. That is not no glitch. That is what the hell, okay? Because it's not the moon, OK? 
okay? And this is not shot backwards or anything like that, ladies and gentlemen. You see a flopper over here by Saturn. That's Saturn. And that is more than likely Mars right there, okay? Because I do darn well believe that more than likely Saturn's way the hell out. Now, this is we know Saturn's got a hell of a lot of moons, but there's a hell of a lot of flopping action going on with the, whatever that is that's right below Saturn, which Saturn's right there, and there's that flopper there. And very interesting, all this flopping action over here, and what the hell is that? Because that is not hardly any of the constellations. And if someone just, hey, it's this, but as you see down here, there's nothing big, okay? Everything big would be up here. And we know this. You can see the size of this flopper right there because you see Saturn, and you know that that's Saturn, and you know that that's Mercury. I mean Mars. Sorry about that. Mars. I did that a lot, but whatever. So when you look at the footage, Saturn and Mars. Okay, and then these all these floppers. Because this will just keep playing and you'll just keep on seeing this fast flopping. And like I say, would they we know scientifically that there are stuff that rotates hundred times faster than the sun. They have found one that says that rotates three hundred times faster than the sun, a star. And um the thing that gets into is the idea that everybody always calls these these planets, but you know, we see Mars and all these objects at night too, you know. Well then they got a luminosity like the moon does. That's fine. But we have floppers here like crazy, okay? Because it just keeps flopping, keeps flopping. If you watch, you can just see it. And it's in a very short amount of time that that stuff is flopping hella fast around whatever that is right there above that. So then we kind of go looking for, okay, no matter what, if something's looking a little bit bright and unusual, then if for some reason that star is closer or something... So we're going to go look for two dots like that on the constellation map to see what the heck it could be. Okay? So you start figuring and looking, and then you can plot back and forth from there to the video. Okay? And then I can plop the video out, and you get an idea that it's got to be something like boom and boom, or boom and boom. So why, if looking at the size of these, the only thing that should even look big, it would be that there. It would directly from, we got it basically as known it to be. I always get it with the M, messed up with the M's. It's not going to show right now, but I, I figured that's, yeah, it's Mars. Okay. So I didn't show it that it was Mars, but it is Mars. Okay. There, Mars, I click on it. Okay. So and then we go back. And we knew that it was in Virgo and stuff like that, but this is what the constellations it was in. But then we go back to the video again. We hope to go back to the video. Okay, so why is it so big looking? And then which what, which the hell ones is it? Okay. Because the camera didn't get tilt tilted, okay? So and as you see that Saturn and Mars end up with a unique tri triangulation here. Either that or for some reason we don't even see Saturn and Mars, and we are seeing all this other stuff, no matter what, as you see, that, and that's kind of cool, because at one point in time on the video, when that bar goes away, or at least I did something to make the bar go away, I've never known that you can make a bar go away, but when it goes away for a split second, you see it, and you can't miss it, it's right there all the time, okay, and it almost looks like two stars or objects, if you can give it, and I don't know if anybody knows a trick to get the bar to disappear for a while when it's playing, but I don't, I don't know how to do that. But it sure does look like either, it doesn't matter, no matter what, it's huge, bright, and it's got that flopper right there with all this very, very fast flopping stuff around there. So constellation why everything is watching that constellational area there all the time, or keep watching in a direct angle from Mars, and that direct angle from Saturn, but the idea you're only going to want to try to track it with Mars movement to keep an eye on it, if it moves with it, or if it just stays there and it's in that constellation. But this is wild flopping action that we end up catching from seeing the asteroid and close object at 0 0.153 IU. And what I forgot to tell you is the slowness of the uh, the speed. Uh, and basically here I screwed up because basically, well, I'll just minus this out and we'll go to it. And there's your blow-ups of them. It's, a big, it's as big as I can get the pictures to come up. It'll be 200. 
So that was it. Okay, that was the comet that came by, and that's the comet that came by. Switch, you know, flop, flop. So in Mexico sky. So actually, knowing that, that basically, and we know the comet came this way. New Mexico sky is NMSU, NMSU, Mexico State University. Okay, is flop this way. Okay, so that one that I gave you earlier of uh, of this, like this morning, basically it was a some five to six hours from this time down on here that I'm recording. Uh, you would flop it from what you're seeing at night sky when we've seen the video, when I play the video, if we, when you see that flopper, okay? And so it's very interesting what is there and also the speed on this thing, okay? So let's go to that because basically it's, it's just right here. Velocity is 19.9 kilomiles a second, okay? So it was moving slow. That's what was interesting too, and also being at point 0 0.153 IU. And no matter what, we found a bunch of wild floppers. And no matter what, absolutely, there you go. Where that that player goes away, I guess. So that's how I do it. And you, just, you see that object just above it, the NM on New Mexico skies. There, folks, you can see that it looks like two planets or two stars. It doesn't just look like one. Okay, and it's very bright. And that flopper, and if you pay attention to the time, even though that, that damn thing moved along kind of slow for a comet in our asteroid, <coughs> it's just a few seconds. Okay, because that's 58, that 57, 58, 59, that's three seconds is all long it takes to go across the sky, folks. So as you see all these stars and objects that are flopping around there, that's flopping just above that object that we found down there that you can't you can't miss. It's right above New Mexico skies. Okay. You cannot miss the idea, the factuality that, and then I screwed up, and because so I, there is a way to get, and I figured, I mean, I've kind of used to know that before, I guess, to basically just get my arrow up out of the way, like this, and it should go away, I think, eventually. But that's a discovery there, because th you know by looking at the constellation map for looking at the sky, that that is not anything to do with this and you know it's not the moon because the moon's way up here okay <clears throat> and let me show you the time that i am showing you because there you go 11 21 a.m utc time friday february 3rd okay you we all love both around that is it okay it's that simple okay so we need to check this constellation out now we know that Ceres is a small planet of like about 290 miles around a radius or something like that, 290 something, maybe 300 miles or in radius or something, and it's up there by Cetus and Pisces, okay, there, and then basically you see it like, looks like a star, and as you can see, its closest triangulation would be something like bam and bam and that and that. So not here is the object, but I'm starting to get interested in checking this out because it's a brown, also somewhat considered a brown dwarf, or a small dwarf. There is starting to be astronomers thinking that it could possibly be some sort of a, uh, a dwarf, a dying star, so, or a dead one. And it's getting illumination from something, then more than likely. So it is an interesting, something that they found not too long ago, I do believe, unless they've known Sirius for a long time. So. And yes, it's three time, three almost three and a half distances away from us than what the sun is, and it is a dwarf planet. Ceres is a dwarf planet, but <coughs> and I don't know if I'll see when it, they found it down here. Discovery year, yeah, it was found a long time ago. I guess 1801, 211 years ago, and I guess current solar system verification and so forth and so on. But it's quite interesting because that's probably the closest dwarf that we know of, okay, to us, and it's like three out and less. Like again, that NASA is hiding something from us, maybe possibly. Who knows? Remember, I told you where Saturn was because that was the flopping where Saturn was at. Okay, that was your Saturn flopping. Okay, it was more than likely this year, which is Virgo. And yes, folks, your eyes don't lie to you, so you know that that's pretty much something because you can see the CME. We've never seen a CME do that kind of action. Okay, and we know that pretty much more than likely should be Venus. So there's a very interesting whatever the hell more than likely one of the suns in front of the uh, the sun and there it is okay your time 2012 okay yes the Big Dipper shows you axis turn folks because basically the Big Dipper used to be more dip down that's why they used to call it a dip it used to be down like this somewhat okay so we got axis
So we'll find out what that story is.